years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. There's the logo. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble. We're uh, we're here, and uh, um, you know what I've been doing both nights. I've been forgetting to put on the Ramble uh, logo. You know this this little doohickey there. See that that one? Okay. Yeah, but I, I put it on, so now it, it was okay. I caught it kind of at the last minute. Uh, having to make a few changes here and workarounds and things like that because I know that I have a thing I push here when I want to start recording the show. And when I push it uh, at the end of like some of music here so that I don't get the promo on the, on the, uh, on the recording, um, it lately, it's been starting late into it. So what I did is I made it so that there was nothing happening after the last spot for like about five seconds, and then I started it. So, and, and, and in doing all of that, of course, in my muddled mind as an old fart, uh, I'm forgetting how to do stuff, okay? So anyway, that's, uh, that's the way it goes. Yes, I'm here tonight. Uh, and I wanna talk about last night. Um, and uh, uh, we may go to the uh, phones early. Um, last night was, uh, it was one of those nights where I say, why the fuck am I doing this? Um, and and it, 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 I've got to, first of all, I've got to say to the members of the citizen panel last night, you were all terrific except for one. And uh, I've tried to, let me, let me go back to the beginning of this whole thing. I've always tried to innovate. Uh, you know, I don't want to do things in the way they always are done because I feel that, uh, you know, it's important for us to be able to try and bend the medium to kind of stretch its capabilities, to find new ways of doing things. And when I went to doing a podcast, I first of all, I, I broke all the rules because most five ca- podcasts are like five minutes long or 10 minutes long. And I went into a nightly two hour format, which probably I should have never locked myself into. I should have just said, here's an hour. But the reason I did two hours is that uh, being an old radio guy, hey, what radio show is only one hour long? Uh, so. You know, it's like Sunday morning public service broadcasting is one hour long, or even a half hour in some cases. So I, um, I um, started this thing and uh, did it as an as as a two hour show, uh, and um, uh, I came up with the idea of the citizen panel, and that was a I, I've told the story before and how that came to be. That was just an accident. What happened was I was looking for a way to take phone calls, and the only way that I could do it was by going to uh, the phone company and saying, well, would you install a system for me? And then I would sit here pushing from line to line. And I went, well, how much is that going to run me a month? And that was going to be a couple hundred bucks a month just to do that. So I was trying to look for other ways to do it, and I found Skype. And with Skype, I found that I could actually put more than one person on at the same time. So the idea was is that I'd use Skype as my audio for phone for calls, and people would call that, and then I could put them all on and and uh, do what we call citizen panels. In other words, not just one person talking to one person, but one person talking to maybe upwards to twelve people. Okay. Uh, uh, it's something actually that I did years and years and years ago in radio. Uh, when I was first starting out at, uh, uh, where was it? Where did, where, where did we first do that? I, I, it's, it was either in Houston, Texas, or it was in, uh, in New York at, w, at WPLJ. But what happened was, is that in the old days you had these phones. You remember the old... You know, 
the, the clunky phones that were on your desk, right? And we would have four lines on there, each with a push button, okay? And uh, so I go, okay, Bob on line one, and I go to him, and I go, Mary on line two, and I go to them. And uh, it was a matter of just pushing down on the right button. Well, something we found out, okay, that in those old phones, uh, there was a washer in the phone on each line, each of the four lines, plus the hold button, that uh, a washer that prevented more than one button from being pressed at the same time, okay? So we found that if you replace, remove the washer, you could push down two buttons at the same time or three buttons at the same time, or even four buttons at the same time, because these phones didn't go past four buttons, at least the one that we had. So we removed the washer, and I started doing a thing where I would have people talking to other people. Uh, and uh, that, was, that worked out just fine. And that I did very early on, and that maybe was what gave me the idea that the citizen panel might be a good idea, because that was something we did then, and now I could do it and I could do it legally without destroying phone company equipment. And uh, I wouldn't have to use a phone company. I could use a thing called Skype. Uh, and so I said, OK, so we'll have a citizen panel. Uh, and uh, the show started going on with a citizen panel. Uh, and what I would do on every Friday night, I would take the, the video from Skype and put it on. and. Uh, uh, just simulcast the show as video, but uh, I, I and I was doing that on uh, live stream. That's what we were doing it. I've since dumped live stream. Who needs live stream? Who needs Vimeo? Well, how's why does Vimeo exist anyway? And I subscribe to it. I have like a yearly subscription to it, which is lapsing now. And I they'll if I don't say anything, they'll just re up me for another year. And I'm thinking about getting rid of it because. Do any of you watch this show on Vimeo? I don't think so. I don't think so. But anyway, where was I? So, so, uh, um, uh, I, uh, we'd started with the citizen panel. And then uh, the video, I started figuring out one way or another that I could do the video five nights, four, four nights a week. And so I, I initiated it at four nights a week, and now it's pretty much come a video show rather than a audio show, although we are going out live on the Internet right now. Uh, so, um, you know, be my guest. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I want you, if you want to listen to the audio, how many people do we have? Do we have many people listening to the audio? Let me, let me look at this. Let me see here for a second. Well, first of all, I'm going to see if we're okay there. All right. Okay, let me see here. Yeah, we got some people listening on the audio only, but you know the thing is, you can just you can go to the uh, the internet and you can uh, you can go to YouTube and you can see us live. You know, so uh, that that. But anyway, that's how the citizen panel happened. And I uh, and I said to myself, you know, um, it's not you don't get that old that you can't innovate if you if you if you look for the opportunities. And I think that uh, the system panel was a complete innovation. Uh, not that anybody really gives a good shit about it, but I think it was an innovation in the way talk shows are done. Uh, there's an upside to it and there's a downside to it. Uh, the upside is it's new, it's fresh, you can get into some really good discussions with a whole group of people with different ideas, and it becomes like, uh, you know, uh, an electronic Hyde Park. I don't know if you know what Hyde Park was, but in Hyde, Hyde Park in London, on Sundays, people get to stand up on soapboxes and uh, give speeches about their political feelings and so on. But anyway, I, uh, I really love the idea and was wedded to the idea of the citizen panel. I don't even know how I came up with the term citizen panel, but I needed a name to describe it to people. Uh, so far, it hasn't caught on. So far, very few people do what I'm doing. I don't know if there is anybody doing what we do. But the downside of it is is that sometimes you get uh, a whole bunch of people at the same time, and some of those people 
don't know how to act properly. Uh, and acting properly is a simple, simple act. Uh, what you do is you don't do anything that impinges on somebody else's ability to communicate in this forum and that there's a give and take and you say what you have to say and then somebody else says what they have to say and so on. But you don't dominate the conversation. You know, you, 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 you care about the people you're with, even if you disagree with them, okay? Um, so, uh, and I also believe, I had several core beliefs about doing shows uh, like this. One of which is all opinions are welcome, even if I don't agree with them and even if I don't like them. Uh, hell, if a Nazi called up the show and wanted to spout his Nazi philosophy, I probably out of my sense of fairness would let him. Just because when I say, hey, here's the Skype line, it's open, give us a call, I don't go, give us a call unless you have an opinion that's opposite or counter to mine. So I've always embraced people who disagree with me. Patrick was the one guy that always disagreed with me when I was doing my show over at Sirius XM. That's when I first met up with Patrick. And I liked Patrick because Patrick was a reasonable conservative. Uh, and uh, I liked the way he presented himself. I didn't agree with a single thing he said, but that didn't matter. And so I've always believed in, uh, in, 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 in allowing people to say what they got to say and to not feel intimidated in any way by saying it. Or, and even though they're in a form where, I mean, most of the people that call this show are to the left, okay? That's just the way it is, I guess, because I'm to the left and I, you attract who you are, all right? All right. So I attract who, who I, I am. But if a, if a person is a right-winger, I want them to feel comfortable here. I want them to feel that they can say what they've got to say and uh, it never is going to cause a real problem to them, okay? Uh, and that I, that I care that, they, that their, their, their feelings are expressed and are uh, valued even though we disagree with them. Anyway, whatever. Well, I have this one guy who I've known for years. Uh, actually, I knew him for a period of time, and then I didn't know him anymore. Okay. Uh, but then when I started doing this, he started calling. And I remembered him, and his name is Phil Meyer. And um, he started calling the show. Well, Phil happens to be uh, a right-winger. Okay, if that's the best way of putting it. Uh, he's not a conservative because conservatives are... He's, he's a conservative like Trump is a conservative. Trump isn't a conservative. Trump is self-serving, but he's not a conservative. And uh, Phil started calling the show, and Phil did something that I really appreciated for the show. He gave it that diversity that even Patrick didn't give it because Patrick was reasonable... Okay, but I like somebody who was oh so far to the right that you know whatever, and and I also liked Phil. Uh, you may not think that's true because of the way I talked to him many times on the show, but uh, I liked Phil, and Phil then has over the last couple of years that I've been doing the show been a good friend. He's always been there for me when. For instance, he senses that I've got some kind of problem. He'll call me up and say, hey, you want to talk about it? You know, give me his advice, although many, most of the time I don't take it. Um, but uh, I, I, you know, I, I value F Phil as a friend, all right? Does that make sense? All right. Um, in the last, I don't know, half year, Something has happened with Phil on this program. I don't know what it is, but where before he was mildly annoying, if you disagreed with him, he was becoming disruptive on this program. Not because of his opinions, but disruptive because he would talk over people, he would go on long rants, uh, he would always have something to say about everything, and what this was doing was taking the format that I created 
and putting a kind of damper on it. The damper I tried not to put on it by allowing somebody like Phil to talk. And uh, it just started to get worse and worse. And a couple of weeks ago, I decided to write him. And then I called him and talked to him on the phone. And I said, Phil, there's something different with the way you're approaching this show. And I, uh, I really wish you would uh, uh, kind of tamp it down, you know, allow, uh, remember that you're part of a citizen panel and other people want to talk too. And not to talk over other people. Your mic is always louder than everybody else's. And, and, and just be, be part of the group, you know. And um, don't, don't go crazy, you know. And, 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 and I'm, I said, I'm not trying to tell you what to think. And I'm not trying to um, inhibit you from stating your opinion. But what I'm saying is I'd like you to like quiet it down a little bit, take it down about five notches so that other, because what I found is that with Phil present, uh, other people who normally would jump in and start talking don't. Uh, they remain quiet. Uh, and um, uh, I don't want that. I don't want... Scott Boddicker, for instance, feel he can't call because he won't be able to get a word in edgewise if Phil's on, okay? Uh, or that, uh, that uh, uh, Jeff, who is very quiet on this program, doesn't feel he can't jump in and say something. When Phil isn't here, he's far more active on the program than when Phil is. Uh, people uh, like Tommy Amaguchi don't even call the show when Phil's on because they don't feel they can get a word in edgewise. Uh, and I wanted him to be aware of that and to f do me a favor and just tamp it down. I said, you don't have to have a comment for everything we say, you know? And I said, and, and, you know, sometimes you just take the show off into a ditch. So I assumed that he, you know, took me uh, at what I said. And I said, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to inhibit your 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 opinions. I'm just trying to tell you to tamp down the way in which you express them, okay? Because you're intimidating other people. And um, he, he agreed. He said, you know, I'm your friend and anything you need, I will do. Well, apparently, it, it, I don't even know if it worked for one night, but it, it certainly was better after I had that call for about two or three days. And then all of a sudden, we started getting back to the same thing. And last night, uh, I had enough problems technically with the program. For some reason, I'm taking some pill that's making it so I, I forget to do stuff. And when you're doing this, it's like you know tapping your head and rubbing your belly at the same time. And um, we get into the show, and we start it up, and we start talking, and all of a sudden... Phil is just, you know, uh, I started to say something, and Phil jumps in. And I'm trying to still say something, and he's still jumping in. And finally, I yelled at him, and I said, Phil, you know, fucking goddamn Christ, you know. Will you let me say what I have to say? Uh, and then he, I think he made some kind of snarky little remark or whatever, like Phil does. And I made whatever point I was going to make, and we got, went on with the show, more show. Okay? Okay, so we're back on with more show. And all of a sudden, um, uh, I'm saying something again, and he interrupts. And it was just getting to the point where I felt that it was hurting the program. And that he was... Uh, derailing the program and that he was uh, uh, disrupting the program and I just got really mad and I just said that's it Phil you talk you say what you gotta say and I turned off my mic and I just sat here and I didn't say anything and then I finally decided ah fuck it I'll get up and see if my ice maker is still making ice and I just got up and walked away and I didn't talk on this program for, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, something like that. And in the meantime, 
what was going through my head was, why the fuck am I doing this? You know, why am I putting myself through this every night? You know, I've got, I have, like last night we had six people. I said, I have five reasonably decent people here. Actually, we had seven uh, later on. Uh, seven, you know, six reasonable people. And one guy is taking the show off the rails. I said, but is that worth even doing it? You know, uh, I would do it for those other five people or the six people. But with Phil involved, it just becomes a terrible situation. And then I start getting notes from people because I put a sign up saying, you know, this may be, the, the, when I put up the videos of the show, I said, this may be the last ramble ever, so enjoy it. Because I just felt that, you know, it, had, it, it was getting to that point where I just was sitting here going, why the fuck am I doing this five night, four nights a week? Why do I continue to do it? You know, we don't have that huge an audience. Why? You know, I'm not making money off of it. Uh, nobody's writing articles about how wonderful this show is. Uh, why am I doing this? And why am I putting myself through what I just put myself through? And um, I got notes from people saying, well, why don't you just kick Phil off the show? And I thought about that, and I went, well, that goes against my basic philosophy. You know, the only person I've ever kicked off the show was a guy by the name of Doug, and I got rid of him because he was disruptive. He was constantly disruptive, but not even in a, in a, in a Phil way, just in a way where he would just, we'd be talking about something, and he'd suddenly start talking about something else. You know, like there was no other show going on but the, but the Doug show. So he, I got rid of him, and I got rid of Mike Allen, too. And that wasn't for a political opinion or even that horribly raspy voice he's got. Um, it, was, it was because he had said something about me. And I just said, then you don't need to be on my show. So anyway, uh, those are the only two people that have ever been really banned from the show. And Phil doesn't come, did, doesn't come under that category of banning because, uh, to begin with, he's been my friend. He's been a decent person to me. And I just couldn't see taking him off because of his political opinion. But uh, getting rid of him, you know, I got a thing yesterday from somebody going, uh, yeah, Phil this, Phil that. You're gonna, you're gonna, he was a Phil fan, okay? And he said, you know, you're probably going to wind up kicking him off the show and whatever, you know. Why do you treat him the way you do, I think was what he said. And the fact was that I was going to write back and just say, well, I treat him the way I treat him because he's still on every night. You know, it's like if I didn't want him around, I'd just kick him off the show, right? And I didn't. And, of course, that guy didn't write me back again after I wrote him back. I wrote, what I wrote him back was blow me, I think was what I said. But anyway, um, uh, you know, the idea of kicking Phil off the show made no sense to me. I mean, I just, it wasn't in my DNA. Uh, Phil had not done anything to me personally. And, um, you know, I mean, he, but he apparently, I felt disrespected, okay, because I asked a favor out of him, and the favor was to do something about this, and he didn't. And uh, he, he said he would, and he didn't. And that was disrespecting me. That was betraying me. It was betraying my faith in him. And uh, so I left the show last night going, I, I just don't want to do another one of these. I just can't. You know, even though there are people who really enjoy it and really respect it and come on and, and, and respect the other people, I just don't know if I personally can do it. I'm exhausted. And, you know, this is no easy thing for anybody, especially somebody of my late years, as I can put it now, uh, to do every night. But if I'm going to do it, it better be pleasurable, and it better be something I, I you know, 10 o'clock comes, and I can hardly wait for 10 o'clock to get here so I can do the show. I want to feel the way that I always felt when I did radio shows, that, gee, I can hardly wait to get on the air because I love getting on the air. But uh, it was getting to the point where this wasn't fun. Last night where I said, this just isn't fun anymore. 
And uh, I decided to come on tonight out of respect to the people who are on the citizen panel and populate the citizen panel on a regular basis and uh, to do it one more time. I have had a communication with Phil. I told Phil that I was disappointed in him, that I felt I'd been betrayed by him, that uh, he was showing a lack of respect for me and a lack of respect for the people who call this program. And he wrote me, and he said, his first thing was, well, then maybe I better not call anymore. And I said, that's not the point. I said, the point is, you know, I like your, uh, your diversity, uh, the diversity you bring to the program, but I don't like the way in which you do it, you know, in which you're depriving other people of, of their place in this program. And uh, uh, he then uh, wrote me and said, well, I, I, I'll, uh, I'll maybe take a couple of nights off and uh, uh, I'll listen to the shows that I've done and see what you're talking about with me interrupting and so on and see if I can do something to tamp it down. So apparently he's not going to be here tonight, or at least that's what it, the indication was. Uh, and uh, I think uh, be, it's it's nice that he will take a night off. Uh, he's got to he's got to figure this thing out for himself. So I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. But I, last night was like one of those nights where I just said, you know, life's too fucking short. I've got other things to do. And and quite frankly, I've thought about getting rid of the ramble and doing something else, you know, doing some other kind of show, doing it another time of the day, different name, maybe not uh, five, uh, you know, maybe not four days a week, you know. I've thought about that, uh, but I haven't acted on it and I haven't come up with a new idea. So, you know, that's it's why I'm not doing it. Anyway, listen, uh, the, the Skype lines are open. Maybe you want to talk about this, but... Uh, uh, Phil, I imagine, will not be on the program tonight, and uh, we'll be back when he feels he can. And if he comes back and he disrupts the program, I'll tell him to hang up, you know, because I, I want you people out there to enjoy the program. I don't want this to be a, uh, a real problem for you, okay? Oddly enough, the... Uh, uh, the um, uh, when I put that stuff up on the postings of the show last night, that yes, you know, maybe the last show or whatever, we got more people watching it <laughs> after the fact than we normally do. So anyway, so anyway, we're here and now. Let's get some calls and let's see if we can uh, get a citizen panel together. Um, hmm. And if we can't. I will just uh, cut the thing off and go home and go to sleep. Ah, uh, here comes the Sibby Itty. Good boy, we haven't heard from this guy in a while. Wait a minute, Sibby, you're there. Hi, Sibby, how are you? Let me, uh, let me. I gotta, I gotta. You haven't had to do this before, but I have to. I uh, couldn't. Uh, I have to. Do I couldn't stay away when you threatened that you're gonna go offline. Yeah, there's Sibby. Okay, here comes Dan. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Dan, uh, let me see here. Dan would be in the second spot. Come on. Okay, Dan, I gotta find you now. Where where, where is it? Wait a minute. Where are you, Dan? You're not coming up. Hold on a second. Cancel that. Okay. Now I will try and bring you up. Hold on a second. I'm in bio. And Jeff Stein is calling. Let me answer the phone there. But first of all, let me do this and get Dan. I'm sure Dan's in here, Mr. Dan. There we are. Okay. And then let me do uh, Mr. Zeller. Uh, Jeff. That would be okay. Jeff. Um, Stein. Uh, oh, oh, hold on a second. Scott, hold on. Everybody's calling me at once. This makes me... This makes me tense. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Stein Zeller, there we are. And uh, then, uh, l let me see here. Wait a minute. There we go. And then let me go over, uh, since we, we have more than that, I have to go over to the fourth position and put Scott in there. Ah, da, 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 da. You guys make me work too hard. There we go. 
Okay. And now, now the big, the big thing is I push a button and everybody can see everybody. Oh, wait a minute. I got the wrong person in the fourth place. Okay. Hold on a second. We got it. Scott Boddicker has got to go in that fourth place. That's oh, why I hate that. Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, I hate that. Okay. There we go. Let's see here. There we are. Ha. Ah. Hey, Sibby. How are you? Hello, Dan. How are you? Jeff, how are hey. you? Scott, how are you? Doing good, sir. You're very Doing good. good. What have you been doing, Sibby? Well, Busy with work, and you know, I have a toddler, so you know, <laughs> yeah, well, that keep you busy. every time around this time is when she needs to go to bed, yeah. and I have to, you know, you live where again? Um, West Long, Coast? Long Island, where Long Island, oh, Long, Long Island. Island. Oh, yeah. I, I, for some reason, I thought you lived on the West Coast, so you're in Long Island, so you're really close, yeah. you're close to yeah. Jeff. Let's all get yeah. together, <laughs> you, know. Right. you know. Hello, Scott, how are you this evening? I'm I'm okay, Alex. Uh, I heard your little talk, and I appreciate it because I tried to come in last night and listen, and all I heard was screaming. And I said, "Well, I think I'll just wait till Jack, and it's calmer." But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No, and I don't blame you. That and that's yeah. what I've been bothered by, and that's what I was bothered by last night. You know, it's not that I don't like spirited conversation on this program. That's not the point. But when it's just hostile, you know. And, and, and the interrupting. That's thats what my wife interrupts me all the time. It yeah. drives me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so you don't need some guy on the air interrupting the host, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Now, I, I, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, and then I'll go to Dan. Yeah, okay. Uh, I got. I got to tell you one thing. Yeah. Uh, other than when when you talk about Phil, yeah, we we all know what he is like on, when he's on the, the show. But outside that, he's a wonderful person. Yes, he's a very nice guy. He really is. Like God knows what's the time I talked to him about something. He's trying to help me things. He do anything for anybody. He's a, just a super nice person. But I was on the show and I turned it off. You, you hung up. You, you. I did. I, yeah. I said, this is bullshit. Well, I, I don't want to hear it. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I, you see, I mean, that's what I worry about. And, and, and I think that there are, I, I could look. Uh, I've never told Phil, don't call. Okay. Uh, number one, because he is a friend, but more than that, because of the diversity and because of my feeling that if I got rid of him, would I be getting rid of him because I disagree with him? And um, uh, so I'm, I'm very reluctant to do that in spite of the fact that I knew, no, that if he weren't on this show, I'd probably get more listeners. I think it turns people away, at least the interruptive quality he has, not his opinions, but the way in which he expresses those opinions. Yes, Dan. Well, uh, speaking as, you know, I, I was a big part of Gabnet early on, mm -hmm. and I kind of recently came back. Um, you know, I, as much as I disagreed with him before, you know, I always, she was always fun, and, and you know, before, and I think a lot of the time also, maybe with, with now that Trump is president, mm -hmm. it's like, wait a minute, this isn't so funny anymore, for one thing. You know, like just making jokes. But, um, you know, before it was like the give and take, I remember. It, it's different now than it was. Well, you could have, you know, I, I think I, there's a, what? Back when I used yeah. to come on, yeah. you know, back in. Yeah, yeah. what, what I was going to say yeah. is the point you're making is kind of an interesting one that I, I don't entirely disagree with. Uh, or I don't disagree with, and that is that we're living in the Trump era. And so we have someone who is defending what I consider absolutely egregious behavior on the part of a president. I mean, it's, em it's embarrassing. I won't, you know, I love to travel around the world and so on. I won't travel outside of this country because I'm afraid of what other people think of me when they find out I'm an American. You know? <laughs> I mean, really, it, it's, it's gotten that bad. And uh, 
while, of course, I mean, you know, he's defending Trump, but it, it, it's become, it's almost like he's trying to imitate Trump. You know, it, it's, it's a change. I mean, it's not the same Phil that was here a year ago or a year and a half ago. Not that much different either. Not that much different. How about how about two two years ago? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> two two years ago, much more reasonable, much easier to talk to, much much lighter, and didn't take himself seriously. So, I think the fact that he's taking a time out is probably a good idea, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, got a lot of people listening tonight. I think it's good for your sanity too, Alex, because I could I could feel your frustration and yeah. Uh, yeah. I understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, th I thank you, Scott. Yes, Dan. Uh, well, I uh, am looking into maybe going into some therapy for myself, and I asked uh, somebody just anecdotally: Has like anxiety and depression ramped up? in the last few years since all this has been going on and they're like absolutely i mean it's like like we're all we're a nation of mentally ill people well sibby doesn't <laughs> look anxiety, uh, mentally anxiety's ill anxiety's up i know that i got it yeah but <laughs> sibby doesn't look mentally ill does he yeah i mean i i do get frustrated at times but the the thing is alex well listen you to your accent of course you're going to get frustrated at times no the the, the thing is I, I believe that if there's something that you have no control over, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no point wasting your time and energy worrying about it. If it's not in your control, you know, just you know, let it ride. I, yeah, I mean, but here, here, here's the question: If something is, I agree with you. If you can't control something, you say, "Hey, I can't control that, so what am yeah. I going to worry about?" Right. On the other hand, if the thing that's, that's, that you can't control is affecting your life. It is, yes. Then it, 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 it the is. question is, do you suddenly take a passive nature to it because you go, well, I have, I can't do anything about it, you know? I've what 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 I have decided or thinking is, I I will not be voting next year. Uh, I don't think it's going to make any difference. I I've thought over it over and over again. I'm just so frustrated. I'm not going to vote. Period. I you would just need, need to vote. It's a statement. I, I'm making a statement that I don't like either side. It's just like that. Yeah, Something like that. Scott, what, what, because I feel yeah. like one side is pandering to the limit that it's annoying me, and the other side is so racist. It's scaring me. Well, I agree you know? with you about the pandering. You know, that's why I find it harder and harder to watch MSNBC as an example, because I just feel they're trying to suck my dick. You know, uh, I don't feel that they're trying to make a political statement and they're you know they're they're ba they're bashing Trump every minute of every day and meanwhile there's the uh, rainforest and the Amazon is on fire and I think that's a bigger yeah. story than any of it you know yeah. uh, hello to uh, Mark how are you Mark hey yeah there's uh, there's uh, our good friend Mark who doesn't uh, call that often let me let me find you a place here on the citizen panel hold on a second while oh, I my the Skype. They updated it. Uh, oh, 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 it's horrible. Oh, yeah. yeah. Skype always uh, is updating. They, they completely want to make things worse. They, they go, well, we fucked up this program bad enough. There we go, Mark. Okay, Mark. Uh, and he's in there, and I then put him on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hey, there's Mark. See, folks? There's, there's, th there's Mark over here. Okay. <laughs> Um, if I may, you've yeah. been so gracious. Um, you, you I, again, that's friendship. Okay. And I got to give you props for that, Alex. I really do. Well, it isn't a question of the friendship. It's a question of, um, you know, it, there are reasons to throw people off the show. I think that we, we know that in the case of, uh, of, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, Doug, uh, I had every reason to do it. It was just I couldn't corral Doug, all right? Uh, and, and, and Doug didn't have a political uh, agenda that bothered me, so I felt completely okay in getting rid of him. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just didn't... He was drunk. Huh? He was drunk. He was drunk, uh, yeah. He was Larry Kudlow. 
Come on. It was Larry Kudlow. <laughs> oh God. Uh, but you know, it it, it uh, it's um, it, it's, it's uh, thank you for saying that, Mark. I mean, you know, um, but you know, last night was it. You know, I just I just couldn't take it anymore, especially because I had had a talk with him about this, yeah. and he said he would do something about it, and it only got worse. It was te- worse last night than it was when I called him and said, "Hey, could you tamp it down?" I, and I, I don't know, and you, you're right, uh, Jeff. Uh, Phil is a very nice guy. He He's a really nice guy. Uh, but once you put him on the, on the air, he turns into like this other animal, you know? The guy I talk to on the phone off the show isn't the same guy. Yes, Dan? Has Phil done radio before? Oh, he worked with me for a short time in San Francisco. Yeah, but he, he, I don't think okay. he's. Okay, I, 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 okay, I, and I and I got got guilty of this too. This is kind of why I wanted to step away uh, from Gabna as much as I had been, like in the earlier days. But it sounds like Phil just was just trying to do a right wing talk show. Well, you know, I and I think there was another problem. I think he was getting to take himself too seriously. Uh, yeah. And even he wrote me today and said, I think maybe I'm, I've been taking myself too seriously. You know, I feel that when somebody disagrees with me, they're attacking my opinions. I, you know, and, I, and, I, I, and my feeling is, you know, if at any point in this business I ever took it personally, you know, or took myself seriously, it was time to get out of the business, you know. And and uh, there are some people in this in, in this business who do take themselves seriously. One of the worst is Sean Hannity. Oh, yes. yes I know. I, I, I've had dealings with Hannity. This guy actually has drunk his own Kool-Aid, <laughs> you know, and believes and believes what he is. And the fact that and, and the thing I always liked about Rush Limbaugh is for not for one moment did I ever believe that Rush Limbaugh took himself seriously. You know, uh, it was other people who took him ter- really seriously, but I don't think he ever took himself seriously. And I've talked to people who know Limbaugh and they say, no, he's, you know, he doesn't take himself seriously. You know, he. If he took himself seriously, he'd be running for president right now, right? You know. Uh, so. Anyway. But I think Hannity will run for office one way or the other. He, you think he, he, he may? Set on it. He may, and it's that lack of, 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 uh, you know, t- that thing of taking himself too seriously that may make him do that. And quite frankly, I think I think there should be a law against anybody who's on television or. Uh, in broadcasting from running for political office unless they're out of the business for five years. Uh, and, the, and, and the reason is they shouldn't be able to cash in on a television pro- popularity or, or radio popularity and cash that in for a political uh, thing. Because it, it, it's, it, you, you're using your, your notoriety to get you elected, not your ability. But on the other on the other side, Alex, yeah. there should be similarly a law for someone who has left political office seeking to make mark in the media. Like, you know, so many of them are being commented commentators on different different channels. Well, I, don't know. I don't the care. Obamas. I don't have know their that, own, own production I, I don't know that I I mind it going the other way. I mean I would prefer that somebody who's a broadcaster like myself get the job instead of some political hack. But nevertheless, uh, I um, uh, you know I, I'm I'm kind of uh, uh, I, I'm not bothered as much by that. Um, uh, 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 by the way, Sarah Huckabee Sanders has just gotten a job yes. over at Fox. Yes. Speaking yep. of that, I mean, big surprise, right? You yeah. knew that was going to happen. Well, you know, I want to know what her qualifications are as a broadcaster. You know, I think it's you know it's completely different. You do a show, 
and you're a broadcaster, it, it's different than being even a press secretary, you know? Uh, and and um, what bothers me is that somebody who's a broadcaster didn't get that job. Okay, so. Mark, you kind I of ag is, agreeing with what I was it, saying. Do you have a feeling on this? Oh, it's, it, 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 it's, it, it, it's, it, it's worse than a donkey show right now. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I mean... It's like, are we not entertained? You know, it's that's what's sad about it, Alex. If it wasn't real, this would be good parody. Yeah, well, you you know what is the most what I, I call the the biggest uh, how can I call it the biggest uh, uh, now what's the word I'm looking for the biggest um, 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 anachronism or whatever in the business is somebody who says uh yeah i'm an nbc uh what's the term they use uh political analyst everybody uh, that they bring in that they they hire for like a dollar 50 is an nbc political, political analyst don't, don't they've got like so it. many of them okay because here, here they got do a show and then they say and Let's talk to our group of people, and there are three people there. And then they take a break for a commercial, and those three people are gone, and they're replaced by another three people. And these are all people who were on the payroll of, like, MSNBC or Fox or whatever. Uh, and uh, they're paid to be on call. And it's just like, it's, here's the story, let's go to our panel. Here's another story, let's go to our panel. I'm so sick of that. I'm so sick of the format and the... I hate Trump, okay? I hate him with every fiber in my body, okay? I hate him so much that if I said how much I really hate him, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, FBI would be here in a second, okay? <laughs> Secret Service would be at my doorstep. That's how much I hate him. But I'm sick and tired of tuning into MSNBC and seeing a whole hour of nothing but Trump bashing. You know, I, I don't need that. I, there's some other news. The Amazon is fucking on fire. Our oxygen is being eaten up. And you're not talking about, oh, yeah, they made mention of it last hour for five minutes or two minutes. Yes, Dan. A uh, couple things. Uh, first of all, well, uh, for news... Um do you ever listen to Democracy Now? I hate Pacifica? it. I, I hate it. Oh, yeah. I love it. It's I, great. I hate it's it. I, I can't stand it. She is, she is another hack. I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 I agree with you. She's another hack. Yeah, she, absolutely. Uh, whatever. But uh, anyway, I like it. But also, I heard another good line. Uh, What's the wrong, Boy, Am what, what, the what's wrong her? Amazon is burning and the wrong ice is melting. <laughs> what, what's her name? I forget her name now. Uh, uh, Amy Goodman. Amy Goodman. I used to yeah. watch it. I used to yeah. watch it. I decided I wanted to watch something good. And I said, oh, it's democracy now. I'll start watching it. She is so fucking boring. Oh, yes. She is so That's dull. Right. Am I right, Sibby? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. She's just absolutely unrelentingly I, boring and dull. Yes. There are, but there are good commentators on the left side. Katrina Vanderhoeven, if, if you remember, she used to, I think had you know editor editor for the nation or something mm -hmm. she was a pretty effective uh, 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 you know the le liberal point of view now you know, this this amy adams and the joan walsh uh, salon yeah. these people have taken over her place but you know they are not half as uh, you know as intelligent as katrina yeah. which I, i'm i'm do you remember alex she no, used I to don't, be, i don't know who she is i really don't Kat yeah, Katrina Vanderhoof, she used to uh, be the editor-in-chief of The Nation magazine a yeah. long time ago. Yeah, okay, well, um, I know The Nation When Obama magazine. was elected, I think, 10 years ago or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, is Sibi, where are you from originally? Let me, because you... India. Uh, India. Yes. Okay. How do you feel? Uh, 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 do you feel as, as a person of, uh, uh, of, uh, of... that would be mistaken... <laughs> <laughs> for being Islamic, <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, yeah but yeah. I, I never, I never felt that backlash. Uh, um, well, at least not in New York. Well, I never, no, I, not, I never you, listen, like you live in New York. You're not, not in... going to feel here, feel it here, unless you walk into Trump Tower. But uh, 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 
Do you, Come to Cincinnati. It, 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 does it bother you? Do you feel the president's a racist when you listen to him? Yeah, I, I do feel that, you know, some, you know, I do feel that he has an affinity towards, you know, people of his own race and, and he considers everyone else to be uh, inferior to, you know, his, you know, ex you know, the way he is, you know, presents himself. Yeah. And yeah. Caucasian, yeah. Uh, which I think is racist. Absolutely. But I also believe that, you know, uh, minorities like, you know, brown person like me, I could also be racist that I could look at some other race and think of them to be, oh, they are not as smart as me, you know? Yeah. It is inherent in us, you know, it's, but to make it public the way he does, he's using the position that he has to make a statement. And a lot of people who have been, who had that feeling in their heart, which which was kind of, you know, um, put under uh, uh, covers, mm -hmm. it's slowly showing up. Yeah. It's slowly showing up because, you know, now they feel as if they have been empowered, you know, why can't I? Why can't I show what I really feel? Well, about? last night, the thing is. What's wrong? With it? The thing you know, is like, uh, you know, the, the king, the Iowa congressman said, what is wrong with being a white nationalist or something like that, you know? No, well, nothing, because you get to wear a swastika. That's nice. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you get to. You get to salute in that you funny way. Yeah, you got all there that stuff nothing, you can do. There is nothing wrong in loving your own race, loving your own tradition. But there is absolutely a lot of things wrong when you well, think that you're superior. It, well, that's that's the difference. You know, there's nothing yes. wrong with identification yes. and, 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 yes. and, no. and uh, loving your identity. Yes. Uh, but there's a lot wrong uh, with... Uh, uh, saying that because of that identity everybody is excluded but you you know yeah i find it just you know the thing that hit, drove me crazy last night was you know we've got in the board on the in this border crisis which i hate the term border crisis because that was a term invented by the trump administration um i hate the fact that these children are being affected like they're being affected. You know, um, they they are the ones that have absolutely no control over the situation. We could say their parents do have a certain level of control or whatever, but uh, the fact of the matter is these kids uh, have no control over it, and this is what's happening to them now is going to affect them for the rest of their lives. And then I mentioned last night something that somebody had said in the uh, uh, in the uh, chat room, which there's absolutely nobody talking in the chat room tonight. It's amazing. Um, uh, 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 gee, there's usually a ton of people, or actually there's two people, and they just write over and over and over again. Uh, but um, uh, he wrote, and it was quite rightly so. He said, "What what these people are doing is a." Um, is not a felony it's a misdemeanor and and we're taking their kids away from them for a misdemeanor like a speeding ticket yeah 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 now um i was, I was gonna say you know I'm, I'm a teacher and there's actually a fair number of uh hispanic kids that i know and uh you know, it, it, it's about empathy because I, you know, I was watching that little girl on TV, and I, I know like some little Hispanic girls. I think I know this one one girl. She loves me to death, and I, I, I think her mom might be an illegal because I mean I'm just guessing because I met her once. She doesn't speak any English. She had to do the translation for me. But you know, this little girl on TV is not much different than this this girl I know, and. You know, it's just like have some fucking empathy. Somebody, you know, just well, empathize with someone other than well, yourself. That, for that's your that's what I think bothered me the most last night was that. Uh, 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 did you raise your hand, Mark? Did you want to say something? No, 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 no. I'm. I'm you think no, no, I'm with you? But. Yeah. Uh, th th that what bothered me last night was when I said to him that you know, these kids are. You know, these are innocent kids. And I have suggested, I suggested last night, and maybe I was right, maybe I was wrong. I don't mind people disagreeing with me. 
But I really say, where's the world court? Why isn't Trump being brought up on charges of um, um, crimes against humanity? Because that's exactly what's going on at our border right now. That is a crime against humanity. So, you know, am I, am I wrong about that? I would like to see at least somebody from somewhere bring it up, but uh, now Mexico, they want to try, they want to, you know, they want to do for like um, the, Mex the uh, El Paso shooting. They want to investigate that as a terrorist activity, but, yeah. you know, that's as far as that goes, I think. Yeah. Yes, uh, Scott. Uh, I don't know. If I've heard this on a couple of talk radio shows. I've not been able to find it in print or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, but the UN has contacted the, I guess the State Department mm -hmm. about going down to the border and inspecting the conditions. The UN. Mm -hmm. I heard they tried to send a letter twice to somebody, somewhere, and they just get no response. So I don't know what the UN can do about it. Can they just go down there and with their, I know well, they don't carry the, guns or anything. The, the, they, they, can, they can do what they call a fact-finding mission, but you know, which you're trying to get they, the facts of what's going on down there. But do you need the permission of the country that you want to go find the facts at? In, I, imagine you, I imagine you do, yes. Yeah. yeah. And if they don't, they can't. Well, if they don't, what are they hiding? You know, exactly. they should say, exactly. oh, the U.N., come on in, go to have a look, you know. Yeah, everything's fine. But, I mean, I think at this point it's gotten to the point where I, mm -hmm. where, where's the Hague in all of this? They should arrest him for crimes against humanity. And, you know, we put the, a lot of people Hague, on. Huh? Actually, it's after. Uh, there, there are uh, charges, I believe, against uh, George W. Bush and Dick Cheney. They will not leave the country of the United States for fear of being taken to that. Well, yeah, who was that? Who was shit. who was that that put them on uh, on a? Uh, do you remember that, Mark? That, it was it was like Belgium. It was like uh, yeah. you know, some other country can bring them up on mm. any charges if they feel they they've violated uh, war crimes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But they won't. Never. They, they're, they're not going to go to Europe anytime soon. Yeah. Some, uh, Candace D is saying Phil may be finding it more difficult to defend Trump these days. I don't think so. No. He, he just, no, no. you know. He, he's all in. He is all in. He's all in. Yeah. Yeah, he's on the Trump train. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, quite frankly, uh, and, and uh, call me wrong here, and, and more people can call. I don't mind if we get more people. It's Phil isn't here. You can talk. Uh, yeah, um, I I think that uh, we are uh, living in a very dangerous time. I think we're de dealing in a time in which uh, uh, it's it's bereft of uh, of any real sanity. Uh, and uh, I just you know when. There was a, when the night that uh, Trump was elected, I, I woke up girlfriend, and she, or I walked in there, and she said, uh, what's happening with the election? Because she fell asleep, right? And I said, sure. uh, Trump won. And her first response was, you're kidding, right? <laughs> and I said, no. And then when people the next day would say to me, what are we going to do now? This is going to be this is going to be a clusterfuck. I said, you know, there's something great about this democracy that we have here. This alleged democracy we have here. I said, it survives. You know, there are enough stop gaps. <laughs> it survives. How no. wrong was I? <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, Mark, do you think it's surviving? I, I, again, I think I told you a long time ago. Well, not that. It's like you look in that magic eight ball, and it, it tells you ask later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> holy crap! I mean, uh, you know what? What switch flipped in reality? You know, that's what I want to know. 
I mean, uh, uh, he does things. It's like he gets up every morning and says, what can I do to piss people off? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll, uh, I'll go after the spotted owl today. You know? I mean, he's done all these things where he's, like, killed. Uh, he, he's allowing drilling in places where we shouldn't be drilling. And he's allowing the killing of animals that we shouldn't be killing. And this is all because he says, oh, it's good for business. What do you mean it's good for business? You wouldn't know what was good for business or you would have been good at it. Or it's a rule the black president came up with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, Scott. He, he, what did he say today? He, he ordered all the American companies to not do business with China? And it, it's not like he ordered him. He made a proclamation that he was asking American businesses not to do business with China. Well, He's try got business in yeah, China. Yeah, try and, and got business in China. Try and tell Apple that, okay? Yeah. And then China turned around and said, "Well, you know, you want to say the little tariff thing? We're putting a twenty-five percent tariff on you." So yep. now, and here's the thing: China's going to win. Here's why China's going to win. China is, this is only them dealing with the United States. They don't need the United States. The trouble with Trump is he's a Wharton student from about 50 years ago who doesn't realize that the world has changed since he studied economics in this world and that it's a world economy and that China can do business with the rest of the world. And by the way, they're speaking with the rest of the world. The only Russia. people they're fighting with is us, you know. They, if, if, if they can sell their products in India, they, and then here's the other thing that he doesn't understand: um, there are countries yeah. that uh, uh, Tim Cook said to him, uh, you know, don't put these tariffs out there because what you're going to do is you're going to screw us because we are competing against Samsung. And Samsung is a South Korean company that builds all their stuff in South Korea. Because we're building our stuff in China, we can't compete against them if you start with the tariff shit. Uh, and the fact is, that, you know, I wouldn't want to buy stock in Apple right now, as long as this trade war is going on. Um, I think it's amazing to me what's, what's happening here. Uh, and this is a guy who studied business? He has, he, 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 he has no idea what a trade war is. Remember his quote? Oh, trade wars trade are wars good. Is, it's easy to win. Did he say it was easy to win? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, he, yep. And I, they say that inside the White House now, uh, he's going nuts because he realizes... He's losing the population. You know, he's got the lowest approval rating of any president in the history of the United States, well, as long as they've been taking approval ratings. Uh, because uh, n no president has managed to stay under 50%. They usually go over it at some point. He has never gone over 45%. You know, he's never well, gone over 50 percent in respectable polls, in respectable polls. Yes, uh, Dan. Well, I, I can tell you around here, he's still got a big fan club uh, here in the Rust Belt, uh, Middletown, where I live. Trump signs in yard. Uh, Trump flags. I see, I see him all over the place. You know, I'm driving around. You see that down in Florida, do you, Mark? I not only do I told you before, not only do I live in Florida, I live in the reddest part of Florida. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's like just ignore it. What are those what what are those people that in all these places gonna say when they're four oh one K tanks, you know, which it's it's doing already, um, you know, what, what uh, how are they gonna defend this guy that he's made life better for them? You know, can anybody here say their life is better under the Trump administration? Trump's wife. Trump's wife, yeah. yeah. 
She's nice to look at, I guess. I don't know. Well, I can't here. take that accent, though. I'm sorry. It, 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 well, neither can she. That's why she doesn't talk that much. <laughs> yeah. Do you know who's been who's just she shuts up? You know who's disappeared oh. in this whole in this whole brouhaha that's going on right now? Are Ivanka and uh, Jared? Yeah. They've become surprisingly quiet ever since Trump made his stupid uh, Jew, yeah. Jew remark. I think that Jared Kushner and uh, Ivanka, being a Jew, would uh, say something about it. Well, I guess she is a Jew, isn't she? I guess she converted. Yeah, she, converted. She, she, she converted. She converted. I don't know. She converted. Is, is there a term for a, a converted Jew from... Gentile. Yeah, it's, in, uh, it, 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 it's it's it, she's called Goyim. Goyim. Uh, yeah. I don't. Want them. <laughs> Jeff got the joke, oh. and so did Mark. That's a joke. Okay, <laughs> but you got there somewhere. I don't know. Trafe. Huh? Trafe. Tra huh? Trafe. Yeah, you don't go down on them because they're trafe. <laughs> Where's Al Goldstein when you need him the most? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where are all the people I know? When I I'm sure it's funny. Movies. I don't get it, but that's okay. Yeah. It's not that funny. Yeah. It's not that funny. God, I'm really exhausted tonight. I'm having a hard time thinking straight. Um, oh, somebody what? asked about Phil's ethnicity. It's German because I'm German, and Meyer's a German name. So yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Anybody putting stuff up? Uh, t -t 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 -t. Even though I strongly agree with Phil, I feel he added some life and fun to the show. Yes, uh, perhaps he should be given a show on the network. At one point, I did offer him his own show. Um, you know. Uh, and and, and um, I think he's, he, did, he didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do it. You know. I he's keep, got pretty sophisticated equipment, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's got a whole studio there. He should do it, you know. But yeah, can't, you know. Uh, I don't think I'll be listening, but <laughs> I'll be happy to give him a show. Let him go do a show, yeah. and uh, you know, leave me alone. <laughs> hey, he can get that American Patriot to call in, then finally, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that guy's a piece of work too. Let me do uh, yeah. the YouTube. Yeah, well, you know, again, you know what I can do with the chat? I did this with somebody the other night who said something nasty about me. So I made it so he couldn't write anything for five minutes. <laughs> like, I could take American Patriot right now. Let me do it. Don't don't take offense at it, American Patriot, but I'm going to do it. Out there talking. <laughs> I can go here to American Patriot, right? And then there are three dots that come up. And of the dots, there's, well, let's see here. Put user in timeout. <laughs> uh, hide user on this channel add moderator remove report okay so if I go put user in timeout okay American Patriot I'm going to put you in timeout okay he's now in uh, he, he American Patriot has been timed out by Alex Bennett for 300 seconds <laughs> I'm just counting down and, and, right now. And James Good Hall day. and James Hall writes, "Yay!" <laughs> so for three hundred, how long is three hundred seconds? Five minutes, right? Yeah. For five minutes, uh, American Patriot won't be able to type anything onto the chat room. So don't fuck with me. Don't fuck with me. Can't yes, Jeff. Something that uh, sets it down. Where nobody can hear it for for a whole month. No. Okay, I, I have certain things that I can do on. I don't know why. No, but, the, the show itself. I, I I I can can I ban people on on YouTube for anything? Like I know on Facebook you can kind of unfriend somebody or you can block okay. somebody, uh, but that doesn't mean if you block them that they can't see your wall. It just means they can't write anything on it, you know. Like right now, it's probably driving uh, American Patriot nuts. But don't worry, American Patriot, you've got about four minutes left, so before you can write again. Uh, but I, I kind of like that. That that drove somebody nuts one night. 
this. Why, why do you keep blocking me? You know, you know. <laughs> um, let's just let's say stuff that would really piss him off. What? Yeah, yeah. Well, say I, stuff that would really piss him off. Know, so I, he's I, just full. I, am, am I too honest when I say that I don't like to ban people who do who don't agree with me? I mean, I I feel. Uh, you know, Banning somebody who disagrees with you is something that Trump would do, and in fact he has done, when he was banning oh, yeah. people from his Twitter account who didn't agree with him. Because you can I ban people. Supreme from Court told him he had to, right? Yeah, I, I think mean, so. Yeah. He, well, you know, he he's one of the. Remember when you were a kid and you said, "You know what I want to be when I grow up? I want to be president of the United States because then I can make laws and make anything happen that I want to have happen." Right, that's that's Trump's attitude about what the presidency is. You know, like I want to buy Greenland. <laughs> I, I want to buy Greenland. Yeah, you want him to buy Greenland. He can't even take yeah. care of a casino in Vegas for Christ's sake. Are you kidding me? You know? Oh yeah, yeah we're gonna we're gonna do Greenland. Yeah, yeah, right. Go go do Greenland. That'll be wonderful. Uh, can, and can you imagine the people in Greenland? Would they want Donald Trump running them? I don't think so. You know. Uh, yes, uh, Dan. I'm, I mentioned this before. I wonder if uh, anybody... It just came to me when I was thinking about this whole Greenland thing. That's where all the global warming stuff is happening. That's where all the ice is melting. What, you got to cover that up somehow, right? Well, well, what Trump said was one of the reasons we okay. wanted to take him over was because... Denmark is losing money on having them as a country. And I'm going, so you want to buy a country that somebody's losing money on? That sounds like a typical Trump financial move. You know it was a lie, because I'm sure Denmark's not losing money on Greenland, because everything the guy says is a out-and-out -out falsehood. Yeah, just... Yeah. Bullshit just comes out of his mouth at all times. Well, you know, to be secondarily, I've looked at Greenland. That's a lot of land up there. Okay, it's almost the size of a continent. That's how big no, it is. No, it's not. It's, it's not really, Alex. It's an island. If you, well, it, it's it's the way they draw the map makes it look bigger than it actually is. <laughs> there's a, there's another map out there. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, but it's on the globe. Yeah. It's it's not it's not it's very small. If you look at island, if you look at land masses ranked and ranking, yeah, it's 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 about a third the size of of Australia, I think. Maybe, maybe even a quarter the size of Australia. It's, it's not that three big. Three times the size of Texas. Three times the size of Texas. Okay, it's big. All right, but it's getting. And, but it's uh, it, it's only fifty seven thousand people there. It's not a lot of. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right, and and the reason is nobody fucking wants to live there. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, I've looked at land uh, there. I, I, I was looking you at. You were it. looking said, at land hey, there. Go there, and I'm looking for real estate. But you can't buy land. You don't. You can only buy a house and put it on the land. But you don't own the land. It's it's all part of the government. But, but that's the same way in Hawaii. I, I think so. It's yes. the same way in Hawaii. You can buy. What you do is you lease. You lease the land yes, that you yes. put your house on for a hundred years. Yeah. Ninety-nine years. Yes. Ninety-nine years. Right. Yes. Uh, yes, Dan. They, when they originally, I don't know, the Vikings or whoever originally discovered Greenland, that's why they named it Greenland, just as a sales sales job, because it was just it was just ice. It was worthless. But they're like, we want to get people to move over there. We'll call it Greenland. Actually, <laughs> Iceland is greener than Greenland. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Switch it over. Yeah. Um, uh, but but Greenland uh, is uh, uh, it's uh, let's see here six hundred I read six hundred sixty five thousand square miles of nothing but ice and a lot of it's melting now so maybe by the time we bought uh, Greenland it would be the size of a postage stamp you know <laughs> but that I think the big question is. And I and I really in in the lack of a uh, of a Trump presence on this program makes me feel guilty about talking about this subject. But is this guy finally, unquestionably, 
losing his mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think that was going on since before he was president. But... Well, no, no, uh, you know, yeah, but, uh, you can lose well, your mind. He's mu personally frustrated. Hmm? He's totally frustrated because he can't accomplish all of the crazy stuff he wants to do. And and I got to tell you, he's got to somehow hear that we're laughing at him. But, you know, why isn't there why isn't there somebody there telling him that you can't do that? <clears throat> Is everybody afraid to do that? Do you think, Sibby? Do you think that, what do you think's the reason, Sibby? I think, uh, see, he lives for accolades. Anybody who praises him, he's going to put them in whatever positions. And the moment you turn on him, he's going to destroy them. That's been his person, you know, persona for as as long as you can remember. And the fact that the rest of the Republican senator, you know the majority senates, they're going with him. That's unbelievable. Why are they doing this? I don't get it because, see, I'm at heart, I'm a conservative. You know, I mm -hmm. believe in having, you know, more freedom to people than government running things for you, which is a different topic altogether. Yeah, but yeah. He's not a conservative. No. He's not. He was never a conservative. The fiscal, look at the fiscal mess that he is trying to push us into, you know. He, why... Why does he think that he can control the Federal Reserve? Let me ask In, you something, Sibby, because you say you're a conservative. Is there a distinct difference between Republicans and a conservative? I think so. Okay, because I, I would agree with I, you. Yes, I think so. I think, you know, conservatives, you know, the old school conservatives are, you know, very few and far between, and they don't, they don't have a voice. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the the Republican, the machine, you know, they, they are the ones with the money. They have completely silenced the rest of them, you know, the, the conservative. So, so what you know, are the Republicans? The, or do the Republicans know what the Republicans are now? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's sad because, you know, the country should always have an opposition. You know, if, if the liberals are a main party in power, they should always have a conservative as an opposition to keep everything in balance. But yeah. I feel like you know we don't have that opposition anymore. It's just uh, it's like one one person deciding everything and no one's opposing it. Well, I think the Republican Party has lost sight of what the Republican Party is. I mean, uh, yeah. you want to talk about Republicans that I I liked? Uh, McCain was a Republican I liked. I myself was for John Kasich and he did visit Long Island and. Uh, you know, I was part mm -hmm. of the, you know, the group who arranged, he came to actually Huntington, uh, the Paramount Theater. Yeah. And at that time, it was raining, and, and we had people going all the way out of the village. I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of people lined up just yeah. to hear this man speak. So it's not that we don't have a voice for conservatives. We do have. I think John Kasich is a conservative. Yeah, but... but, but he, the, he's I guess. one of the few who has never turned back. You know, he... He was against Trump from the day one, and he still is. Yeah. Which is how it should be. And yet he's, he's a, conservative. Not a conservative. And yet he's a conservative. Yeah. Yes, yes Dan. Well, yeah, John Kasich was uh, the governor of Ohio yes. until, until the Trumpers uh, kind of pushed him out. And uh, but yeah, John Kasich, I. He was oh he was the he was always I saw as the adult in the room like yes, during absolutely. the Republican That's the debate. Adult in the room, yes. Yeah, the um, adult in the room. Everybody else was just being kids and yep. and but John Kasich, uh, uh, yeah. you know, I'm I don't agree with him. He he had a ladder. He was well, very I'm, conservative about abortion things like that. But he was the adult in the room, and since he's left. Uh, they got Mike DeWine, who's another yeah. Republican that uh, the Trumpers thought they had one going on, but yeah. he wound up raising gas taxes. And yeah. uh, let uh, me uh, mention, yeah. let me mention somebody that uh, a lot of the people listening to us are too young to remember: uh, Barry Goldwater. Now, yes. well, I was very much against Barry Goldwater because I was for LBJ, right? Uh, and uh, as I as the years went on, I began to look at Barry Goldwater and see in Barry Goldwater one of the most honest politicians that ever existed. I mean, he 
I didn't agree with his politics, but I agreed with his honesty. And um, he is a guy who wouldn't have done any of the things Trump is doing, because to him, that's not what America was. You know, he was an arch conservative, but he believed in American principles. I don't think Trump believes in American principles. I don't think he knows what they are, and I don't think he's ever had them. You know, he's never and, and, had any principles at all. Uh, the two things I liked about uh, Barry Goldwater was once somebody said to him, "So how do you feel about losing?" He said, "Well, they told everybody that if you voted for me." Uh, we'd escalate the war in Vietnam, and a lot of people voted for me, and sure enough, we escalated the war in Vietnam. <laughs> uh, and his other line was, and this was an interview I saw with him, it was on the back porch of his home in Arizona, and it was um, a, by the way, where's Charlie tonight? Usually Charlie's here every night. Uh, have we lost Charlie, too? Uh <laughs> What Unless happened? he's bowling, huh? Unless he's bowling tonight. Oh, really? I know. We, I know, but I, I have. Has he been around this week? No. Yeah. What? Huh? Maybe, maybe on, maybe on, uh, on, on. That. Well, I didn't do a show Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday. Could have been Wednesday. But anyway, because that's, I thought of Arizona. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, where was I with Arizona? Something about Arizona. Uh, Goldwater. Oh, oh yeah, course. yeah. Yeah, he's sitting on his porch, and somebody's interviewing him from one of the networks, and it's nighttime, and he's looking out at this nothingness of land in Arizona. And she said, uh, so um, what do you do now that you're no longer running for president? And he said, well, my wife and I like to come out here on the porch and just kind of sit here and look out at the stars and hum hail to the chief. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I thought that was terrific. That's funny. You know. Anyway, so I guess I got to write uh, Charlie and see where he's been. I don't know. Nobody calls me anymore. Look at this. We get when we got five quality people here, but look at this. I could, I could use one more. Uh, Kevin isn't here tonight. Gee, I, I would think a lot of people would be here tonight. Uh, Tom Emiguchi isn't here. Tom would show up. Yeah. He, because he always looks. To, is it coast clear? Is is it true he's not going to be on tonight? Okay, I'll well, call. Tom does not like to talk bad about Phil when Phil's not here. So oh, I, I see. can see why. He so Phil's got to be here so he can talk bad about him. But when well, Phil's he never here, talks bad about anybody. But he doesn't like to talk about Phil if Phil can't defend himself. Tom so. Iaguchi is one of the nicest yeah. human beings on the face of the yes. planet. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Hey. Or observably, whatever Trump would say. Yeah, he's well. He, he, uh, he's a um, uh, Quaker, isn't he? Yeah. Or Tom. Tom. Yeah, yes. Tom. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and he's a very good person, you know. Yeah. So. Anyway, um, so what else is out there? Well, we got the burning down. Now, are they <clears throat> saying that the uh, that the Fires in the Amazon. Uh, Charlie's brother. Oh, what? Oh, I just got a note from Patrick. It says, Charlie's brother is visiting him this week. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, gee, you know what I like about Patrick? He's kind of the social person of this whole group. He keeps in touch with everybody, right? Mark keeps in touch with you, right? Yep. Yeah? And he keeps in touch with me a lot, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I love Patrick's social ethos, as it were. Um, but if you're listening, Patrick, give us a call. Anyway, his brother's visiting this week. Okay. That, uh, that explains it. By the way, we're only doing two shows next week because I'm taking Thursday and Friday off because it's the Labor Day thing. And, uh, I may or may not go out to Fire Island with Marjorie. If I don't go, then I'll stay home here. Because we have guests, we have here. Here's what Marjorie did. We have guests visiting us. Uh, Buddy Love, you remember Buddy Love, my friend, yeah. and, uh, a singer. Yeah. Uh, he's coming to stay with his wife, uh, starting on Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But Marjorie has us going out to Fire Island on Thursday. And I said to her, "Well, 
they're going to be here on Thursday. And she says, oh, well, they can put the key under the mat. I shouldn't say that because now you know the key will be under the mat. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll hey, by the way, the there's a whole bunch of equipment here, people. The, the, yeah. the, the, the keys are under the mat. Man, um, I'd love to get my hands on that. But equipment. I said to her, how, how could you make those things overlap, you know? So I decided I probably will stay here so that they don't have to put the keys under the map. And, uh, then, and then here's the other reason I don't want to go out to Fire Island. I mean, I, it's nice out there. We have some friends out there. They invite us out. Just go out there. You do nothing. You know? and, and at this age, I don't mind doing nothing. All right? Um, but the problem is that it's also the, is it the last week yet. It's going to be the last week of the uh, of, of uh, tennis or, or maybe it's the middle no it's the middle of tennis of the of the open out in Flushing or wherever they're holding it now and uh, she has to watch tennis okay. and so I am stuck in this place <laughs> with tennis on the only TV set in the house I only got one TV. Can they you only imagine? have they only have one TV. How uncivilized is that? You got you got at least one TV in every room, right? I have a total of uh, let's see one, two, three, four, five, six TV sets. Six. Yeah. 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 Uh, I we use them all, you know. Yeah. Uh, how many do you have? Scott's counting them. I'm just. One. I have four. I have four. Oh, okay. And I'm not a And then in the studio, we have one, two, three, four, five monitors. I know Mark's, Mark's grabbing his head like, you know, <laughs> why'd, you get, why'd you do that? Mark. I only got two monitors in my studio. Yeah. And I have two televisions. They're not even 4K televisions, Alex. Oh, wait a minute. What are you? Are you, are you what are you? Are you a farmer? What are you? <laughs> it's, 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 it, this is not the time right now for me to upgrade my uh, TVs. That's, that's the whole thing. Here's the thing about upgrading your TVs. Have you seen what 4K TV sets are going for right now? But I got to wait till next year. I you got know, my reasons. There's a TCL that we bought. I, uh, well, believe me, I saw the 75-inch. It goes at Best Buy for under $900 now. You don't have to tell me. Yeah, but here's the one we bought. We bought. We, we needed one for the living room, and we needed a 55-inch to replace the set that was in there. And we got a TCL with a built-in Roku. You got to remember, Roku's going to cost you 79 bucks right there, right? Uh, $369. No, it's just I can't do it this year. I have to wait till next year. Yeah, I mean, but how cheap can these TV sets get? And by the way, the TCL isn't bad. No, That's it's not, not as rich and good as the low rent Samsung I have, but it's it's good enough. You know, is it Chinese safe? Is it Chinese TCL? I've never uh, heard of them. It's, uh, South Korean. South Korean? Okay. Yeah. Do you remember? I can go with that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't know what TCL stands for. The Creative Life. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's. I swear to God, that's what it stands. The Creative for. Life, really? Yeah. I'm like, really? Well, okay. Know, but can you imagine we're in an age now where you can get a 75 inch panel for way under um, for under a thousand? You can get a 75 inch. You can get a 75 inch TCL. I saw it for 900 bucks. 899 dollars. <laughs> and it's got a built-in Roku. Okay, so you can't you can't beat that. You know, and and, and they probably get cheaper. <laughs> you know. Well, if you, if you notice, and again, I don't want to, but the bleeding edge, or as I as I call it, the um, the, the the tax for the biggest size seems to be the 87, 85 inch range. That's what's getting the big bucks. But you know, give it a couple of years, boom, that go drops in price like. Well, you know how big how big a screen do you want? Because the question is, how big is the room you're going to put it in? Yeah. Now, I only got a 55 inch Samsung for my um, for my guest room because the bed is close to where the screen is. 
And really, you want to think when you're buying a TV set about the field of view it covers. So, uh, you know, in my bedroom, I've got the beds back further. I could put a 75-incher in there. I've got a 65 now, and it would probably be fine. But it really all has to do with how close you are to the screen. It doesn't matter what the size of the screen is. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Um, and um, so, uh, so Mar Marjorie goes, oh, we gotta get, we got to get a 75-inch. <laughs> I, I said, no, we're keeping the 65 inch in the bedroom because it's the only set we own that's 3D now. You can't buy 3D TV sets anymore. You can't hmm. go on Amazon, go look for 3D TV sets. The only 3D TV sets you're able to buy are old, you know, like a couple of years old. Uh, and I have another 3D that I'm thinking of of actually having a repairman come in and repair because I think like a capacitor blew or something in it, and they're pretty simple to fix uh, because they're getting a fortune for 3D TV sets. You, I see them being sold used for like three, four thousand dollars because they don't make them anymore, which is terrible because I love. 3D. I don't know what it is. I, I was a 3D fanatic when I was a kid, when I was growing up in the 50s. Went to see every 3D movie, which meant I went and saw a lot of really shitty movies. Uh, because they always made the shitty movies in 3D. That's how they got people in the theaters to see them. Uh, horror Huh? The old horror movies, like the Swamp. Well, no, Pinch. not necessarily. Uh, let me name a few films. Sangaree. Oh, my God. With Fernando Lamas. Oh, my God. A film that, even though it was in 3D, is totally forgotten. I have a copy of it in 3D, by the way. Oh. I have uh, both, uh, both uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon pictures that were in 3D. In 3D here. See, yeah, Alex, that's then, then, Alex, then you might be the one who can answer this for me. Yeah. So you remember there was a movie called uh, Invaders from Mars, the original one? Yeah, that wasn't in 3D. Okay. But, uh, someone told me they swore it was in 3D. No, no. I, I was like, well, I don't think so. But if there was a movie that could have, that would have been cool in 3D, it would have been that one. Well, today know? they could take it and, and convert it to 3D, but it's not. I, I don't like 3D conversion because it's not really 3D. You go back. You, the reason I try to collect all those old ones like House of Wax and Sangaree as bad as it was and The Maze as bad as it was is they were all level. shot stereoptically. They weren't conver converted to 3D. So what you're really seeing is real, honest to goodness 3D. So, it's, it, you know, I'm a I'm a 3D purist, as it were. Uh, and uh, what's his name? Um, James Cameron is making movies using real 3D. Yeah, not not the thing called real 3D, but using stereoptic 3D. Him and Ridley Scott. Uh, he did a, show, a picture that he did that Rodriguez directed called Alita uh, recently, and it was shot in 3D. It was shot in legitimate 3D along with special effects and so on. So it was, it's, uh, uh, but I, uh, you know, I just don't, I, the fake 3D bothers me only because it's, it's not 3D. You know, it's just not. And so you go back and you watch all those old films like uh, Oh, I uh, Kiss Me Kate was in 3D. Dial M for Murder, Murder. Alfred Hitchcock's, yes. was in 3D, was filmed in 3D, was never released in 3D because as Hitchcock described it, um, uh, 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 well, how do you put it? I think the line was uh, 3D lasted seven days and they released mine on the 8th. Uh, it, 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 he didn't release it in 3D because it, 3D had died by then, so they just released it flat. But recently, in recent years, they brought out 3D prints of uh, Dial M for Murder. Well, and I his, saw 
I saw it in 3D at the 8th Street Playhouse back in the 80s when they did a 3D festival. Yes, that's because that's when it w they had copies of they it had, in 3D. They had to get it from from Hitchcock okay. yeah. slow at the time. Yeah. In the original release uh, of, of Dial M for Murder, they did not release it in 3D. And then they made 3D copies and showed it that way later on. Uh, and what's amazing about that picture is the way he used 3D. He used it unlike anybody else. He saw the value of it. What he did is he built, for instance, trenches in the, in the, in the set so that you could shoot upward and look at people and use the depth for that. And uh, uh, sometimes up from the ceiling, looking down. You know, not, not, he didn't use it at only one point in the whole picture does anything come out of the screen at you, okay? Otherwise, he used it for the depth, for the feel that, that it was taking place in. And the only time uh, in 3D something comes out at you is when she is being leaned over a desk and this guy is trying to kill her and her hand reaches back like this, like it's reaching out to you saying, please help me. And the hand is like hanging out there, and then she finds an, a pair of scissors, and then boom, in his back. That's the only time anything comes out of the screen at you, and it's it's great. It's it's Matt Hitchcock did a beautiful job of 3D, but you know the trouble was that 3D, what killed 3D were all the terrible movies that were made in 3D. And by the time the good movies did start coming out, like Dial M for Murder. Kiss Me Kate, things like that, where they were literally putting good production values into these pictures, and nobody wanted to see them anymore. So, uh, uh, so Sibby, how old's your kid? Sibby's gone. Oh, he Sibby's gone. Oh, did he go? Uh, yeah. Oh, did he leave us? Well, I'll just leave his picture there. Yeah, he uh, he bugged out. I was going to ask him. Uh, I was going to ask him because I heard something on the. On the news today, or on a, another station, that uh, the leader of India is also a fascist, and I, yeah, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's spreading. You know, like they say, the guy it Brazil is. is a fascist and right. whatnot. So, so I mean, it's just not us. It's it's happening everywhere, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Geez, anybody want to call and just take up Sibby's place for the time being? We only got about. 17 Thanks. minutes left here it you know you wouldn't i'm not going to take up that much of your time okay don't let me bother you but but yeah they're you know i, I see it too it's like a hey, uh, boris johnson you got uh the guy in india you got the guy in brazil that's why these fires are starting uh, the the hard right is uh, gaining in I think European Parliament uh, to some degree, mm -hmm. and I think you know what I think a lot of it is is you know the, the thing with migrants a lot of it's come the violence and everything but a lot of it's the weather a lot of it's the droughts this is uh, climate change uh, coming to roost mm -hmm. a little bit too, and a lot of the immigrants moving around and that's probably why some of the hard right wing get in there because you know they don't like these different weird people coming across their borders you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah well, that's a large part i think i mean hold on a second i'm trying to i i, I i'm oops uh-oh oh no don't tell me my oh no okay we're fine now we, we had a slight problem here oh why did that move there i didn't want to move there uh, let me see here. I'm trying to get rid of, uh, um, there we go. Okay. There we go. Let me, uh, let me just transition this over there. There we go. I just moved Mark into the top spot so that we don't have to have Sibby frozen. So now you're in the top spot, Mark. You're, uh, you're in a hallowed spot on the citizen panel. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, let me see here. What else, what else is there? we can talk about I'm trying to think if there's anything major um, to deal with do you hear about this guy there's this guy I can't remember where it's down in uh, I don't know I can't remember where one of the places down in the Bahamas where this guy is accused of murdering 
this other guy. Uh, the, he, the hotel worker. Yeah, and he claimed that the hotel worker came in and started attacking him with a knife. And so he protected himself and killed him. Right. And so now they're putting this guy on trial. But it's kind of, what I don't understand, there's a certain civilized attitude other countries seem to have that we don't have. But the guy has to keep going back to this country from the United States to stand trial. And the, like yesterday, he had to go down for a hearing that lasted five minutes. So he flew all the way from New York or wherever down to the Bahamas to t do five minutes in court, get back in a plane and come back. What, do, they don't even for a moment say to themselves, you know, if we let this guy go, he may not stand trial. Uh, and the same was true with this rapper. What's his name? Uh, uh, A.K.A. A -A Rocky. A.T.K. What was it? Uh, a -A uh, as soon as possible. A.S.A.P. S.A.A.P. Oh. Yeah. No, it's not S.A.A.P. Well, anyway, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Rocky. Uh, he gets thrown in a, uh, was it Swedish prison? Some, yeah. Yeah, Swedish prison. Somewhere up there. Uh, for this fight or something that he had with somebody. And they finally they held a court hearing and they hold, the, they hold a trial. They hold a trial like within two weeks after he gets arrested, right? right? How's that for being civilized? Two weeks afterwards, they hold the trial. Uh, they say, well, we're going to work on a verdict here. You can go back to the United States while we're working on the verdict. What? <laughs> you, will we do that here? Hey, listen, uh, uh, Mr. Weinstein, we're having a... <laughs> we're, 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 we, we've just had the trial. Uh, now while we uh, think about what we're going to find, whether you're guilty or not guilty, go ahead. Go to England if you want to. You know? Go back to work. Go back to well, work. work. Yeah. ASAP was convicted, so I saw that. ASAP, ASAP. was convicted, but he was charged thirteen hundred dollar fine. Oh. And time served. And time served. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know the whole deal with that is. I though. think I think they wanted to find him guilty because the president of the United States, his his name is Donald Trump, uh, interceded on ASAP or ASP or whatever his name, Rocky's uh, uh, behalf. And I think they went, fuck the United States. We're going to try this guy anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 one of the things I heard today I thought was kind of funny and, and very intuitive was uh, the way Trump is acting right now. He's acting all crazy and, and, and you know, all these, you know, just nuts. Yeah. Someone, someone said that they think he's working on a defense so w when he gets voted out of office, he can, he can go into a mental hospital instead of prison. <laughs> I do you think he's that conniving? Isn't that the plot of a Bugs Bunny cartoon without more? <laughs> oh, it's not like that. That. It's a, yes. Well, hey, like hey, he's, Mark. You know, let's. He's been on a defense plan already for when he gets arrested. Look, look, okay, look, okay, look, Mark, okay, good Mark, I got bone spurs on my brain. Mark, let's, <laughs> let's be honest about. Let's be honest about something. This whole country for the last two and a half years has been a Warner Brothers cartoon. <laughs> Looney Tunes. You know, it's oh, just been, goodness. you know, I mean, what else, what else can it possibly be? You know, I, I don't, uh, I don't. Insanity. Think. Hmm? Insanity. Complete insanity. It's complete insanity. Uh, and, uh. I, 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 you know, I, 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 as I said last night, uh, in the middle of the whole brouhaha that was going on, you know, when I was a kid, and I was taught in school what America is, and I believed it, and this isn't what I was taught. Well, you were lied to also. Well, that's a possibility. That's but I bought the lie. You know, yeah. No, yeah. we all did. We, we all were a country did. that welcome welcome people and was tolerant towards all races, even though you know. I thought Christopher Columbus was a great guy. Yeah. He was an asshole. A well, genocidal maniac. To begin with, the, 
it, it, well, the motherfucker never uh, discovered America. Yeah. Here's the thing that always bothered me about that whole... In school, if they ask you, well, here's a test. Who discovered America? And if you put down... And, and, and I, I said to the teacher, I said, <laughs> well, how can you discover something where there are already people there? <laughs> Shut up and answer the question. Uh, yeah. Wrong. You're wrong. You know, it was Columbus who discovered. No, but he couldn't you have discovered America. You know, sometimes I'll ask people that question, who discovered America? And they go, well, this is a trick question. It was Leif Erikson. And I go, no, it wasn't Leif Erikson. It, there were people here when he, they found it. Now, if you want to ask a question... Who found America, discovered America for the white people? Well, then maybe we can say Columbus or we can say Leif Erikson or whatever. I mean, there's nobody whiter than Leif Erikson. Uh, you know, Americo Vespucci, you know, whatever. But, but, but to say who discovered it, and if I were an Indian kid, a Native American kid, sitting in a schoolroom and they said, who discovered America? And you said, oh, well, Columbus, I, I'd feel... Wait a minute. What about my grandfather? <laughs> you know, what about my, my, my great-grandfather? They, they were here before you were. So, I mean, I've always found that what we learned in school was really a white man's interpretation of history, not a open idea of history. Now, I wonder what they're teaching in schools today. Are they actually teaching that Columbus, Columbus discovered America? I don't know. Uh, it's uh, it you know it is changing. Oh, you're last, a teacher. Uh, yeah, yeah, since since I was when I was a kid in school, it was all Columbus, Columbus, Columbus. Yeah. Now it's uh, you know it's still Columbus, but I think it's a little bit, and I don't know for sure, but that yeah. less emphasis is placed on that, and we don't get Columbus Day off anymore. It's not a holiday, so. It used to be. Jeff has his hand. Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah. So uh, my grandfather came to the United States mm -hmm. in uh, 1921, mm -hmm. if I'm correct. And, and he brought his wife mm -hmm. and three kids. Yeah. And he had a guy with a big beard. Because people in Europe, Jewish people, had beards. And he went, well, I'm coming on this ship, and I'm deciding the best thing to do is I'm going to take off my beard. And I'm going to look like an American when I get there. So he comes into New York, mm -hmm. and I look at him, and I go... That's not the guy on your passport. Oh, yeah, you're telling me that, right. Get out of here. And uh, the wife and the three kids are in New York, and he got shipped back to Europe. Ah, uh, the original family separation. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, let me ask you one other thing. Where, where, what happened to Scott? Because Scott might want to get in on this. Uh, uh, anybody just, have an opinion about the new IDs on your on your driver's license that you have to have if you want to get on an airplane? In I Octo don't quite understand it. October 2020, you have to have what's called the it's, it's either enhanced or whatever it's called, oh, but it has yeah. a star on it on your license, and you have to in order to get that, go to the DMV, show them four. Methods of proof: a passport, a uh, a bill that's addressed to your home, uh, a your your driver's license will also do. And there's one other thing that I had to have. What, what, what was it that I? Oh, and your social security card for proof that, of who you are. And then they give you this driver's license with a star on it, and that way you can get on an airplane. Starting October 2020. Fuck 
Well, the, well, I heard this whole story on the news, right? And they t they told the whole thing, and they said you have to have it by 2020, otherwise you can't get an airplane. And then they said, of course, if you bring a passport with you, you can get on the airplane. <laughs> of course, if you bring oh, something oh, else, you can get on the airplane. In other words, if I bring the proof myself, I can get on the airplane. What, what Jeff? There, there is going to be thousands of people who don't have that stuff. Oh, you, you bet your life, you know. What I'm doing, I mean, we're, we're going to go get, I will have to get a new driver's license anyway by December. So we're going to get down a couple of weeks and do it. But, you know, I mean, and, and think of the clusterfuck at some of these DMVs. Not now, okay, okay. because everybody will wait till the last minute, right? But how about at the DMV next, uh, oh, let's say July? You know, it's bad enough as it is already at the DMV. Although now you can make appointments, which we're going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They, they they were having a problem up in the uh, next town up the DMV in the county seat. Yeah, seven hour wait, seven hours to get your into the line to get into the DMV. What they for? They had firemen outside handing out water to people in the line so they wouldn't pass out. But they, but they why 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 what was the lineup for? Because of the, of this thing? No. I, I mean, it just said well, we're always busy. Well, here, in the here, 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 you can make an appointment. In, well, you can make an appointment there too, but it, it still takes seven hours. I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's insane. You know, so, I, you know, I just won't get a license if I got to put up with that shit. Well, I can't. It, make, and, and the last time I mailed it in, it was fine. No, but the know? part that got this me was when they said you, you got to have this license with a star on it, and then they said. But you can also get on if you have a passport, okay, yeah. you know, or, or some form of identification besides the driver's license. You know, it's, you know I haven't I haven't flown in six years, so fuck them. I don't I don't care. I don't need a plane. I don't know. I'll drive. I'm, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I just are, are we getting a little timid? Do you think, Mark, well, we're, do you think we're, we're getting yeah. a little frightened of our own shadow? Yeah, I think it's bullshit. See, I, I, I want a thing at the airports where I can, either, I can either go through TSA and all of that and get on a plane without any hijackers, or I can go on the I'll take my chances flight. <laughs> you know, and that's an airplane where I don't have to show anything. I can do what I used to do, which was get out of the cab and run like hell for the gate, and then you show my <laughs> ticket and get on the fucking plane. Exactly. I want that. I want the, I'll take my chances. Hey, if I get killed by a, a, a terrorist, it's my fault. Okay? That sounds like a great business you opportunity. Buy a release form before getting on a plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. But don't give me this shit about I gotta, you know. I, TSA is the worst on top of everything, you know. They think their shit doesn't stink. They, they stole my watch once. Well, they didn't exactly steal it. I left it behind and nobody came and said, hey, is this your watch? They probably figured if I didn't take it, they could take it afterwards, you know. So, I don't know. Ah, what a world we live in. We're so frightened of our own shadow, and everybody's going to shoot us, and everybody's out to kill us. Well, we're, that's Americans. We're just afraid of everything. We got have guns. Yes, yes Mark, out. you'll have the final word here. TSA stands for Travel Sucks America. <laughs> Yes, TSA, making, making travel a living hell for you. I want to thank uh, Sibby for being here, even though he's not here now. Uh, but uh, that was terrific. And uh, thanks to Mark. Uh, always love seeing you, Mark. Uh, uh, Dan, good seeing you. Scott, great seeing you. And, of course, Jeff, always a pleasure having you around. Uh, what I'd like you all to do is give a big wave goodbye, and I will wave right back at you, okay? And uh, have, a, have a nice night, everybody, okay? All right. Hey, that's it with our uh, citizen panel. Let me hang up on them. Good to see some people that we don't normally see, uh, like Sibby and, and so on. And uh, let me hang up on the people that are there and close the line up so that... Uh, 
Jack can use it. Jack Bishop does the intersection. That's up next right here at Gabden. Uh, and uh, then we have, uh, let's see here, we have, uh, we're off until Tuesday, right? Uh, Damien will be back, by the way, on Tuesday. So there'll be a show with Damien at uh, 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and uh, next week, uh, we're only on for two days. We'll be off on Thursdays and Friday. Uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a holiday. So let's, let's, let's take advantage of it. Uh, we'll be back again on Tuesday night, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.